but we have another option. For those of you that are on really tight budgets and can't afford even the low cost of black magic gear, you can transfer the files themselves. And here's where things start to break down. When you're using camera cards, extreme care needs to be taken to be sure that all media shot is transferred to the computer in a way that can be easily read by the computer. Mistakes made during transfer are the most common mistakes during production. And here's the thought process people go through. They say to themselves, self, I do not understand all the files that are on this camera card. Therefore, all the files that are on this camera card must not be necessary because I don't understand them. Therefore, I'm not going to copy all the files on this camera card because I don't understand what they are. Therefore, they must not be necessary. So I'm just going to copy the MTS files from the card to my computer and I'll be fine. And about five seconds later, just after they've erased the camera card, I get an email. And it says, Larry, all of a sudden, I can't get my video into the computer. Why not? I said, did you copy the entire contents of the card to its own folder on the hard disk? They say, no, 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 I just copied the MTS files because that's all I need. Dummy! Wrong! You copy the entire card, even the files you don't understand, from the card to its own folder on the hard disk. Let's be really clear for the people in the back and the cheap seats. I want to make sure this is completely understood. You create a folder on your computer for each card that you shoot. You put the card in your computer. You select the entire contents of the card and drag the entire contents of the card to its own individual folder on the computer and everything works great. You're all nodding your head. And invariably, 10% of you are going to go back home and say, you know, Larry really didn't mean that. What he meant is, I just need to copy the video files across, and now my audio disappeared. How come? Or I copied the audio files across, there's no time code reference. All my script supervisor's notes don't work. <sighs> copy the entire card to its own folder on the hard disk. Now, the next question is, <laughs> Don't select just portions of the card to copy. The name of the folder is more important than the name of the files inside the folder. You're going to be able to rename all those files in your editing system. That's not a problem. But the name of the folder becomes the way that your, your editing system is going to be able to keep track of stuff. And I've come up with a naming convention that I'd like to recommend you use unless you've got your own. If you're just calling it Fred and Ethel and George, that's probably not a really good naming convention. So I've invented this, JM02 underscore 130227 underscore AO3. Breaking this down, this is a two-letter, two-number project code. The two letters refer to the client. The number refers to the job for the client. This is Just a Moment Productions, JM. It's the second job I did for them, JM02. The next you'll probably recognize is today's date, 2013, February 27th. It gives me the date that I recorded the card. Then I generally shoot multi-camera, A, B, and C. This tells me whether it's card from the A camera, the B camera, or the C camera. Then it's the first, the second, the third, the fourth card that I shot that day. This gives me a chance to guess pretty much where in the day that card was shot. So now just by looking at the folder name, I know the client, I know the job, I know the date, I know the camera angle, and I know roughly when in the day that camera was shot. This then comes in as metadata. It's permanently married to your file, and you're able to then know exactly where that stuff is. This folder name doesn't change. It travels with the data wherever I make copies of it. I found this is a really reliable way of, of tracking the stuff that I shoot on set. You can copy files using the finder or, there's a, or use the utility like XDCAM transfer that came with your camera. A program that I particularly like for DIT work is by Imagine Products. It's called Shotput Pro. Shotput Pro is a copy program. And as such, it does several things that the finder doesn't do. This allows you to set up your naming convention. 
it allows you to specify more than one destination at a time. So I can record simultaneously to three, four, five hard disks that are attached to my computer. It also does additional verification, check some verification, that the finder doesn't do. So it does faster copies to multiple hard drives, supports the naming convention that you specify, and it does a more accurate job of making sure that the bits that are on the card exactly match the bits that are transferred to the hard disk. It's a really simple application, and I found myself using it on a regular basis because basically all I have to do is put in the card. It automatically discovers the card is there. It automatically creates the folder. It automatically transfers the media. It automatically verifies the media so that I don't have to worry about screwing up. It does it for me automatically. Once we're in ingest, Ingest is the process of bringing files from the hard disk of your computer into your editing software. Premiere Pro CS6 uses Adobe Prelude to ingest clips. Premiere can do it, but Prelude is the preferred way. Prelude allows you to review, log, capture, and rough cut your clips. Now, the benefit to using Prelude as opposed to Premiere. If you've got an assistant editor or a production assistant, you can assign them the task of reviewing clips and putting a selects reel together. They can be working in Prelude while your editor is busy editing scenes inside Premiere without the two of them fighting each other. If you've got multiple people, you can have multiple people using Prelude feeding clips in. Think of a reality show. In the States, reality shows shoot between one and 2,000 hours a week to be able to create reality, which I think is just hysterical if you think about it. Anyway, we've got two to 3,000 hours of which we've got to manufacture drama. Well, you can't have one editor reviewing that. There's only 168 hours in a week. The only way you can pull a reality show together is you've got to have a team of production assistants looking at all that footage and doing a selects reel and feeding that up to the editors so they can cut the show. Prelude makes that really easy. But Prelude is designed to work with tapeless media. The other option we have is within Final Cut. With the 10.06 update, Final Cut changed how it functions so that when you type Command I, it opens up a brand new media import. In earlier versions of Final Cut, we needed to specify we're bringing it in from the camera, bringing it in from the camera card, bringing it in from, from a, a file. Here, it's all just Command I. The media import box opens up. Here's a real, we don't have an answer here. That's the short, the short piece, archiving. Most filmmakers make money selling their film after they've got it shot. When James Cameron did Avatar, he generated four petabytes of data. There's megabytes, there's gigabytes, there's terabytes, and there's petabytes. Petabytes are so incredibly huge and vast, he's got four of them. I mean, I have no idea how he's going to... Who's going to tell James Cameron, I'm sorry, you can only keep one petabyte of data, that's it. I don't have the other... Who, nobody's, gonna, nobody's got that kind of courage in Hollywood. They'll be unemployed the next day. How are we supposed to back this up? We don't know. What do you need to store for long periods of time? What are you going to be making money on? Many filmmakers will take their B-roll shots and sell them into stock because you can make money back on the footage that you shot. How are you going to store it? Where are you going to store it? How are you going to pay for ongoing storage? How many backups do you plan to keep? What happens if one backup goes bad? You're going to need multiple backups. Who's responsible for keeping your files safe? Who pays for keeping your files safe? Most filmmakers get their money for the project. Project. Suddenly, five years down the road, how are you supposed to continue investing in getting the update technology that is going to allow you to... We don't have the answer. One of the things that you should do, because I do it when I go to trade shows like NAB and IBC and BVE, is I go up to the storage vendors and I say, what have you got for me that doesn't cost 10,000 pounds? And they all look blank and say, you know, we're geared for the enterprise market. It's 100,000 pounds or 250,000 pounds. Now, I checked in my my bank balance the other day, I did not have 150,000 pounds in my checking account. I'm sure all of you do, in which case I could use a loan, but the, the whole idea is most of us are working as independents, two, three, four employees, one or two editors working together, and we're not... How many people are charging their clients to store assets? Right. So how are we supposed to make money archiving this stuff? 
I keep beating up on the vendors, the, the caches, the HPs, the, the Altrium consortium, the IBMs, and say, what can you give us that costs less than 5,000 US dollars that we can use as independent filmmakers that's going to allow us to archive our media? We currently have the following options. We have hard disks, which are inexpensive, they're fast, they're easy to use. They need to power up periodically. If you take a hard disk, unplug it, and store it on the shelf for years, your data is going to get gone. You don't want that. So you want to bring it back in, spin it up, and make sure that everything works. Connections change. Right now, I can't get FireWire attached to any Macintosh. I've got to take FireWire, well, I can with an adapter cable, but soon the adapter cable won't be available. So you want to make sure that you bring your hard disks as, as, uh, as uh, connections change. Think of all the, remember when um, SCSI 25 megabits was built into all Macintoshes, and all of a sudden the SCSI connector went away. How am I supposed to get my data back? The lifespan of a hard disk is probably three to eight years. LTO is probably the established version. It's got a long life, established workflow used in corporate America and corporate Britain. Expensive capital purchase. You need to copy every three generations. The current generation of LTO is LTO 6. It reads and writes LTO 6. It reads and writes LTO 5. It reads LTO 4 and doesn't read LTO 1, 2, or 3. So if I've got LTO 3 media, I've got to copy it over before the generations expire. Optical media, DVD, Blu-ray. Easy to use and expensive, but there's limited storage space. The lifespan varies by organic dye, generally a life between 10 and 25 years. There's a new optical media just showed up a couple months ago called M-Disc. Long life, created with existing DVD and Blu-ray burners. It's new to the market, has limited storage capability, but it has a life of 100 years because it doesn't work with an organic dye. It works with etched stone and it etches with uh, the DVD burner. Tapeless media requires a different way of thinking compared to tape. Properly ingesting media makes all the difference. Copy the entire contents of the camera card to your hard disk. Masters are now the files that are on your hard disk. You've got consistent naming conventions becoming more and more essential because otherwise you can't find stuff. And archiving files can no longer be an afterthought. You need to think about how you're going to archive them, how you're going to pay for the archiving, and how you're going to maintain that archive over the life of the media, which could be decades. Hollywood is still making money on films that were created in the 1930s and 1940s, and they're still having to come up with new versions of old films. Much as we may have liked film or tape, the new world is upon us. It provides greater flexibility and greater quality than past systems. We just need to consider its special needs as we move through production. Two places to visit Blackmagic Design site, because I'm very grateful to Blackmagic sponsoring my visit here. Take a few minutes, visit the Blackmagic website at site F24. Take a look at how this stuff works. Take a look at what the challenges are. My website, I publish a newsletter every week with all this stuff in it. The newsletter is free. I encourage all of you to go to my website and sign up. If anybody wants copies of slides because they were hand-holding their camera and it was shaky, just give me your business card. I'll email them to you tonight. My name is Larry Jordan. Thank you very much.